الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله My brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome again to another episode of our series The Blessed Days of the Hijjah Brothers and sisters in Islam Hajj is an act of worship that grants you a new beginning Hajj, brothers and sisters in Islam is a pillar of Islam that grants you Jannah Hajj Brothers and sisters in Islam is so rewarding. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned certain restrictions for you to receive these rewards. He mentioned in Hadith Abu Hurairah in the two Sahih that you do not violate the etiquettes of Hajj. And also he mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith Abu Hurairah as well, that the Hajj must be an accepted one. And this is the title of our episode today, Towards an Accepted Hajj. How can you offer an accepted Hajj? But before I go there, I know the rewards that I have shared with you regarding Hajj is sufficient to motivate you in order to perform an accepted one. But I cannot go passing by or disregarding the fact that I should share this hadith with you. A beautiful, overwhelming hadith. It's out of this world. The hadith fi mu'jam al-imam al-tabarani, al-mu'jam al-kabir, wa musnad al-imam al-bazzar, and also fi sahih ibn Hibban, rahim Allahu al-jami'ah. The narrator of the hadith is Abdullah ibn Umar, and the chain of narration is sahih, is authentic. Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, he said, Kuntu jalisan ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama fi masjid mina. I was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid in mina. It looks like this hadith took place during the uh, time the, the, the days uh, where the Hajjij, the pilgrims, stay in Mina uh, after the day of Eid, after the 10th of the Hijjah. And two companions of the Prophet wasallam showed up. One of them is from Al-Ansar, and the other one is from a tribe called Thaqif. Fasallama, they said to the Prophet wasallam, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulallah. The Prophet wasallam answered their salam, then they sat in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they started. One of them started speaking, saying, "Jitna li nasaluka." We came to ask you, O Messenger of Allah, and they are about to continue talking and mentioning what they want to ask the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kind of spoke, and he said to them, "If you want." I can tell you what you came to ask me about. And if you want, I can refrain and you tell me what you want to know. Look at the uh, beautiful manner of our messenger. 
He taught humanity, manners, and etiquettes. If you want, I can tell you. I can tell you what you want to ask me about. And if you want, I will stop and you ask me. Then one of the companions in the wording, the man from Al-Ansar, the one from Al-Ansar said, O oh Messenger of Allah, أَخْبِرْنَا فَنَزْدَادُ يَقِينًا وَإِيمَانًا Tell us, by you telling us, informing us something that we did not share with you, something that is still hidden within ourselves, this will increase our iman, our faith, and our certainty. Then the Prophet وسلم, started telling them what they came to ask about. He said, you came to ask about what reward do you get for leaving your homes and traveling all the way to the house of Allah in Mecca to do tawaf. And you came to ask about what reward do you get for doing the two rak'ahs after the tawaf behind the station of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And you came to ask about what reward do you get, do you get for doing the tawaf or the sa'i between the Safa and Marwa. And you came to ask about the reward. What reward do you get for standing on the mountain of Arafah till the sun sets. And you came to ask, what reward do you get for throwing the pebbles, Ramul Jimar? And you came to ask, what reward do you get for offering the sacrifice, the haddi, the slaying of the animal on the day of Eid? And then Tawaf al Ifada. And then you came to ask about the reward for shaving your head. And then you came to ask about what reward do you get for the farewell tawaf once you leave Mecca. Ya Allah. In this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa can name all the etiquettes, all the pillars, I'm sorry, all the pillars of hajj in this hadith. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the Sahabi from Thaqif, he said, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ by the one who sent you with the truth, O Messenger of Allah. This is what we came to ask about. This is exactly what we wanted to ask you. Allah informed him, brothers and sisters in Islam, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Brothers and sisters in Islam, as soon as they verified and confirmed that these are the things which they came to ask about, then the Prophet وسلم, started telling them the reward. As for you leaving your homes behind and traveling all the way to Mecca to do the tawaf of the Umrah, your animal does not left a hoover, a feet, and places another one, except you get a reward and you get a sin erased. Ya Allah, look at this. Any a step that you make in your way to Al Haram. Imagine if you're coming from America. Imagine if you're coming from England. Imagine if you're coming from Australia. Can you imagine how many sins are erased and how many good deeds are added? As for the two rak'ahs behind the station of Ibrahim, as if you have freed a neck from the offspring of Ismail. As for the tawaf, the Prophet called it tawaf between the Safa and the Marwa, the walking between the Safa and the Marwa, as if you have freed 70 necks from slavery. You get the reward for that. As if for standing, as if for standing in the mountain of Arafah. Listen to this, brothers and sisters in Islam out of this world. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْبِطُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lower heaven in a way that fits him. We believe that Allah descends subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how? We don't know. Should we ask? No. But we believe it. فَيُبَاهِي بِكَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the angels in a boastful way. Unduru ila ibadi, look at my servants. Atawni shu'than ghubra, they came to me dusted and disheveled. Min kulli fajjin amiq, from every distant, far away valley. Yarjuna jannati, they are hoping for my jannah. Ushidukum ya malaikati, bear witness my angels that I have forgiven all their sins. Even if it is as much or as many as the drops of the rain, the sand, the pieces of sand, or the foam of the sea, I have forgiven all their sins and I have accepted the intercession for anyone those people the hajij intercedes for. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet وسلم, continues saying, as for throwing the pebbles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiate a major sin that you committed. As for shaving your head, every piece of hair that falls down, a sin erased, a reward added. As if for the sacrifice on the day of Eid, it's in store with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for the farewell tawaf, an angel comes and pushes you. Go home. Your past is erased. Start working for the future. Don't worry about your past. Idhab maghfuran lak. What other reward do you want, brothers and sisters in Islam? What other reward? But again, to earn that reward, you must perform an accepted hajj. How can you do it? Let's take a short break and come back and talk about the steps that you must take in order to offer an accepted hajj to receive all these rewards. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> La Baik Allahumma La Baik La Baik Allahumma La Baik La Baik La Shah as we all know is when a Muslim would say La Baik Allahumma La Baik La Baik La Sharika Laka La Baik Inna Alhamda Wa Ni'mata Laka Wa Al-Mulk La Sharika Laka I should not say that every Muslim should perform Hajj and when we are performing the Hajj we need to reach this perfection by seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, by seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and we do not know what is good for us. The Kaaba is not the bricks that is being built. The Kaaba is what is behind or what's behind the meanings of Al Kaaba, the first house of worship. If a person would know the wisdom behind every move that a person do in matters of worship, then where's the submission comes into the full meanings of it. To remember what Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim السلام, when she went from the Safa to the Marwa, so concerned and disturbed about the affairs of her child Ismail, when he was laying some, time, some place between the Safa and the Marwa, crying because of the shortage of food and water. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the rewards for an accepted Hajj are out of this world. Out of this world. What can you do to offer an accepted Hajj? Five things. Five things. Listen carefully. One, sincerity, ikhlas. Two, mutaba'a, adherence. Three, do not commit any violation. Rather, perform good acts. And I'll explain that. Four, make sure that you provision 
during Hajj from Halal. Five, make sure that you make a tawbah before you begin your Hajj. Are you ready to detail those? Inshallah, we'll do it this episode and the coming episode. Sincerity, ikhlas, brothers and sisters in Islam. Ala lillahi ad-deenu al-khalis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves, deserves a sincere deen, a sincere act of worship. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كما في صحيح البخاري حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه الله سبحانه وتعالى says أنا أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك I'm all sufficient I need no partners I need no partners من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشريكة أو شركة أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم If you do an act and you associate someone else with me in this act I do not need you I do not need you In the day of resurrection brothers and sisters in Islam الحديث في مسند أحمد حديث محمود بن لبيد رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says Allah سبحانه وتعالى will tell those who used to do acts in the dunya for people to show off to show off go and receive your rewards from the people to whom you used to show off for sincerity don't go to hajj because you want to be called a hajji don't go to hajj because you want to say that i performed hajj seven eight nine ten eleven twelve times don't go to Hajj because you want to say, I go to Hajj every year. Don't go to Hajj because you want to put it off your chest. I know some wealthy people. They have not performed Hajj. They are wealthy and they are Muslims. And then the people would ask them, have you performed Hajj yet? Then he becomes ashamed to say no. So the reason who he went to Hajj in order to say, yes, I did. I'm done with it because he feels down you're healthy you're wealthy so he shies away from answering this is not why you go to perform Hajj complete the rituals of Hajj and Umrah for Allah but look Look, let's look at the one who taught humanity sincerity. Wallahi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam taught mankind sincerity. Here he is, Anas ibn Malik, the narrator of this hadith. And the hadith is compiled fi Sunan ibn Majah al-Quzwini, rahimahullah, hadith Anas radiyallahu anhu. Anas says, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is about to begin entering into the state of ihram he got on a camel he said by allah i would not buy this camel for four dirhams a coin like four dollars and when he sat on his camel he said allahumma hajja la riya'a fiha wa la sum'a oh allah I want to perform a hajjah. I don't want to show off. I don't want to be named after it. Look what a lot of the Muslims do now, brothers and sisters in Islam. They take them in cars and they put white flags. Oh, he's going to hajj. And when they come back, they meet them with music. Subhanallah. <laughs> They meet them with music at the airport. <laughs> music is haram. Hadith Abi Malik al-Ash'ari fi al-Bukhari mu'allaq wasala ibn Hajar. Ta'im will come when some of my followers will make halal 
music. Brothers and sisters in Islam, and they go and draw the Kaaba on the house. Or other cultures, as soon as the people return from Hajj, they make uh, a journey, they make kind of banquet for them, and they invite them, and they start speaking. Or what about these brothers and sisters whom we see in Hajj? As soon as they put the ihram on, they hand over the camera or their phone to somebody. Please take my picture. Take my picture. Here is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he got on his camel, he said, Oh Allah, grant me a hajjah. No showing off. No reputation. And how dare you take a camera? During the performing, while they are performing the tawaf, while they are performing the sa'i, some people stop the people in order to get a photo camera, or a, photo, a picture, in order to uh, take a, a picture of them while they are performing the rituals. Ya ikhwah, brothers, sisters, focus, do it for Allah. You have spent a lot of money on this. For the people, in the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reward you for this hajjah. He will tell you, go to the people to whom you wanted to show off and ask them to reward you. Would you like this to happen to you, brothers and sisters in Islam? No. Make sure that when you enter into that state of ihram at the miqat, when you're about to do the ihlal. Allahumma labbayka hajjah. Allahumma labbayka umrah. Make sure that the heart is resolving. The heart is speaking. Oh Allah, I'm doing this for you. Oh Allah. The heart is saying that. Of course, it is permissible. Uh, actually, the, the ritual that you say it with your tongue. But I want your heart to resolve. It's so important, so important, especially at the time of the miqat, that you make sure that you're saying, your heart is saying to Allah, Oh Allah, I'm performing this umrah for you. I'm performing this hajjah for you, Oh Allah, not for the people. Even so, the jurors, they say, during the course of hajj, if you end up saying a word, or doing an act that may reflect showing off and you do not entertain it for a, a lengthy period of time, Allah will forgive it for you. But the initial start of the act, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, the hadith that you all know, hadith Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه, إنما الأعمال بالنيات, the initial intention must be sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first condition, brothers and sisters in Islam. And if we are to talk about sincerity, I could talk about sincerity in two, three episodes. But please, Hajj is a costly journey. Hajj is an expensive one. You do a lot of work, make sure that you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for the people. The second, brothers and sisters in Islam, the second condition for the Hajj to be accepted or for the Hajj to be Mabrur, it must be, it must be done according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed Hajj the 10th year after Hijrah, and we have a beautiful, beautiful Hadith. This Hadith is so famous. Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah. رضي الله عنهما حديث في صحيح مسلم it's one of the lengthy hadith in صحيح مسلم where Jabir recorded actually how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم performed his hajj الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hajj he said to his companions خذوا عني مناسككم فلعلي لا ألقاكم بعد عامي هذا Learn the rituals of Hajj from me. It may be that you will never 
you will not see me after this year. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters in Islam, as soon as the companions heard this from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their eyes and their hearts and their brains became recording machines, recording what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did in his Hajj. And they reported it to us. Now before you go to Hajj, it is your responsibility to learn how to perform Hajj. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Faqihus Sunnah, Imam al Bukhari, Rahimahullah, in his Sahih, in the Book of Knowledge, he named a chapter Babu al Ilmi Qabla al Qawli wal Amal. Look at the chapter. Knowledge precedes, comes before acting or speaking. Because if you act without knowledge, you're going to end up committing a bid'ah. And if you speak without knowledge, you're going to end up misguiding people. Therefore, brothers and sisters in Islam, it is your responsibility to learn how to perform hajj before you go to hajj. You will become amazed that Muslims are experts. How much this hotel, this has an open buffet, this has breakfast, this has dinner, experts in the prices of packages. But when you ask them, how do you perform the tawaf? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's figure this out. La, la, you must learn before you go. Inshallah, my time is up this episode. Join us the next episode of the blessed days of the Hijjah. We're going to explain further how can you offer an accepted Hajj so you earn the rewards, inshallah. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.